Hey guys, Pod Gaming here. Hope you're all well. Today we're going to be going through the design concept of my creation for this year's global build off, the best harbour. Now, if you missed the actual live stream, you can now re watch that on the City Skylines live channel. So go ahead and watch that because there are some incredible creations in that. The rundown for the competition was very simple. We each had the same map, which was this one created by Mr. Miyagi. He created the map and then built a little town on there called Town of Sunset Harbour. And we all used this to then build our harbours on. So very simple, we had the seven days to work on this to then submit and it would be judged on a number of criteria. So if you jump on the workshop, the link is in the description below for you to download and subscribe to this map and try for yourself. You will however need the DLC to do so and if you would like to buy it please consider using my link below which will give me a very small percentage of the purchase cost. Before I got started into the build I kind of wanted to look at the map and see where the best location would be to do a harbour and there's obviously these main big areas here for sort of large ports and some very nice harbours but I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to stay away from the big heavy industrial harbours and I wanted to create a very small cute little fishing village stroke harbour. So I decided to actually build right over this side of the map away from most of the busyness so I would have to try and do something with that to bring the people in and uh, sort of make it come alive that way. Now I will be honest I did struggle at first to really think of a suitable theme. I know I wanted to stick to a UK build rather than going to a you know a more heavy robust area so I definitely wanted to stick to a UK build that was for sure and I basically looked online at the most common most famous much most unique style of harbours and there's quite a few really nice ones on there I could have picked literally any one of the sort of five or six that I shortlisted but there was one thing about this particular location I wanted to do and I needed some support from that to do so. So on screen now you'll see the the area that I have based my build on. Now if you are from the UK you may remember this location from a famous BBC TV series called Balamori. <laughs> and so the location we are building, well what we're trying to replicate in a sense, obviously it's a recreation of a creative manner but this is a place called Tabori it's located on the Isle of Mull up in Scotland and it just looks beautiful there is something about this location with these beautiful colored houses that really make it pop and it's a really interesting location because it is literally built on this one street it's all really small and compact but there's a lot of buildings and a lot of stuff going around and going on and I wanted to really utilize that with my build to really really show the level of detail you can perform in a small space that was my goal I didn't want to do anything big outrageous it's not how I build generally anyway so I think that was probably obvious to um, the people who saw my submission they knew it would be small they knew it would be unique and very detailed and that was that's what I wanted to go for I wanted to try and be a little bit different because I I guess a lot of people would go very big in terms of huge ports and the industrial areas so I wanted to try and be a bit different and that's why I chose this particular area. Now I said I needed some support, you'll probably notice that these buildings are the UK terrace buildings by the one and only Rick 4000 and he very kindly put together these houses with a different coloured texture on them so that was how I was able to do that and to be honest without those coloured houses um, I don't think I would have been able to do this anywhere near as good as it looks at the end. I would have still been able to re recreate it looking very similar um, but unfortunately not all the houses on the workshop you can use the painter to change the colour of the walls. You'll see a bit later that I do find a number of them that I can do and they worked out perfectly but a big shout out to Rick4000 for supporting me on this. Now I got the buildings down first as you can see on screen but I did need to use PO in a number of ways to make it look a bit more realistic. Now the first feature of the Procedure Objects mod that I used was the inverted feature. So what this does, it basically flips the asset you've got down, in, well, inverts it, <laughs> it's probably the easiest way to describe it. Um, and I used that to then create a gap in between the buildings which then, you'll see a bit later on, I then put some shops in and 
trying to change the look of it. I didn't want it to look all the same because the houses that Rick done all have the the doors on the same side. So you'll see here where I've put the two together side by side, there is a gap which I can then insert a very small shop. And I'm using the Monaco ones here. I do later use some other ones as well, but it just makes it pop because these buildings themselves aren't all houses, they are um, commercial buildings. So doing that works really well. And also it generates more people in this location. So more people will be coming because one, it's a house, but it's also got a shop inside it as well. So you've got both the, the residential and commercial values in one. So as I said earlier, it was a bit of a struggle at first to get this going, this um, project. It did take me a little bit more time to do so. I think because I was also worried that there was a time restraint um, involved in this. And obviously the, <laughs> the, the people involved, the other competitors are incredibly talented. So I didn't want to be that one person who looked like they didn't do enough or did something a little bit too small and you know I wanted to still show that you can build a small build um, and spend a lot of time in it and it shows um, in that sort of sense so I had that on my mind it did take me a little bit of time like I said but once those colored houses went down things started to take shape I got these piers in next um, which is this this area here is the, the harbour part of the the build uh, very small it's literally just a fishing harbour with some um, industrial warehouses on. So I wanted to try and keep that vibe going here. I didn't want to change it up too much. I kind of like that feel because if you put too much into a build, it does take away from the realism. If I ended up putting a huge port next door or some industrial sort of factories nearby, it just wouldn't really, it wouldn't make sense. So I wanted to try and keep the realism. I wanted to keep the Scottish um, UK vibe going as well. So that was the the plan which finally got me moving in terms of the build. So like I say, it did take a bit of time doing so and I did find myself kind of detailing early on. My intentions were to get things down, get a template down and then see how much time I had left um, because I am still working. So having a week to do this may sound like a lot of time, but for me, I also do have a full time job. So I need to try and accommodate that in. So first job was to get the foundations down get it functioning and then to see how much time we could do um, in terms of actually building the detailing segments of this. Now, you probably noticed from the screenshot earlier that there is a huge sort of tree foresty area in between the, the main front of this high street and then the next tier of houses. And I wanted to recreate that. That's the one image that really took my eye when I saw this location. It was that feeling of the houses and the, the harbour on one tier and you have these big trees above them and then higher up you can just about see the the rooftops of other buildings and churches and that's what I wanted to go for so that was what I was doing on the screen there just trying to create some height between the two which then eventually would fill with some trees and you'll see a bit later on how well that came across. So next up, I wanted to fill out this area. Now, the actual harbour area itself in real life is pretty much just a big car park with buildings scattered amongst it. And that's hard to do in City Skylines if you want to make it functional. Um, I mean, I really wanted to use these, um, these car parking lots uh, because they function so well. And you'll, you'll see later on in some of the video clips and the cinematics at the end, the car park fill up amazingly well. Now, I've always had trouble with my other builds of Monaco and the Isle of Wight to get these car parks filling out really quickly. And I think it's obviously down to the fact that I don't have many people in the other projects at an early stage, whereas here, we've already got 18,000 people. So there's a lot there. Obviously, we've got the industrial area as well, a lot of shops we placed down. So we're almost like creating a hotspot for people to come to. So that worked out really nicely. But I really wanted to keep the theme of all these car parking spots and there is a really nice view looking out to see where the car parking lots are very close to the edge of the harbour and I wanted to recreate that so I changed these roads over, I added in these ones which have the diagonal car parking spots on the side um, to try and recreate that feel. Now I could have filled the whole area up in concrete and recreated that big car parking space that it is in real life but I wanted to make it functional. I wanted to be able to see things happening in this. Um, so we stuck with that in the end. 
Now, there is a bit of an industrial area, like I said, in the corner here, so I did find a number of suitable buildings to fit that feel. Again, I didn't want to go over the top. I didn't want to do too much. There is a little car park garage, um, a repair center, so to speak. There's also a boat yard, which looks like the place you would take your boats to be fixed, repaired, or maybe built up from scratch. Um, and I also had this idea of a little water shoot down. Um, you'll see there, there was a bit of PO, and I cut most of this out, but I did create a really nice version of it using PO, which looked beautiful. But when I reload the, go the game the second time round, for some reason that PO wouldn't load up. So I'm not sure what's happened there, but I couldn't risk that again. So in the end, I used Ronix's network um, terraforming prop to um, bring down a, a level of the actual land there as well to recreate the slope. And we come back to that a bit later on. So with this, this harbour being mostly based around a fishing area, it made sense to put down a little fishing market square here as well. So we got these beautiful assets on the workshop alongside with um, Jez's beautiful market, play, uh, market squares as well. So we've used them all together. Did use a bit of move it to add some of the fishes onto these empty counters just to create a bit of realism again. Um, but it worked really nicely. I, I like the idea of these fishing crates and hiding some around, putting the cardboard boxes around. It really gives off that market vibe quick hustle and bustle the sort of thing you'd imagine is open quite regularly maybe every every sort of working day that this is going on um, the main place you'd come to come and get your fresh fish not sure if it's so realistic in terms of the actual location itself but my vibe here was a fishing village a fishing harbor so it worked out perfectly well and it's also i've kind of created it to seem a bit like a distribution center as well as this traditional market square so that was the approach I went for there um, and I think it worked well um, we obviously have made use of the new expansion as well with the DLC using these fishery etc and there's a lot of really cool new assets and props on the workshop now because of this new content so make sure you check out those there's a lot on there um, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more as things progress people taking advantage of these new mods so yeah, not new mods, sorry, these new, new, new DLC. But all in all, I was really happy with that. And we then move on to this segment here, which is what I've seen on the Google Maps in terms of what there is. And this actually is a sort of car garage repair center. So I wanted to keep that in. Um, and this one by Rick4000 is pretty much perfect for this area. Very similar to the actual one in the, the location I'm basing this on as well. So that's always handy. It's a UK asset anyway, so it's always going to look right in this particular build. So we got that down and we're pretty much just going to be detailing now onwards. We've got the core down now. Um, there's a few more functional bits we put in a bit later on. We will move on to the um, ferry area as well. But I wanted to create a little fishing zone here in this corner. So we put down the, the fishing pier, which will actually generate people fishing on, which is good. That will look really good for the cinematics. Um, and this area here I wanted to create, like I mentioned earlier, as a little a sort of a fishing boat um, restoration centre or the sort of place you take your boats to be repaired or maybe they, like I said earlier, maybe they could actually build them up here as well. So these buildings work perfectly. We've got some warehouses there which adds to the theme. Now over here again, following on the earlier vibe, we've now using some of the other um, shop front assets from the workshop just to give out the vibe and they worked out really well. I particularly like the restaurant pink one. You can just see in the corner there because I actually changed the color of the building to the exact same color as the um, the house that um, Rick4000 created. So they worked hand in hand beautifully. And um, yeah, it actually, it actually looked like it was one building, which is really, really cool. Now this industrial area, I didn't really want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, it was just a very basic build, um, putting down some crates and forklifts. It's more of a back lot, a back view to the build. Um, but obviously I still wanted to detail it as I do naturally. And the same with this area here. These walls really do change the look of your build. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but when you start putting walls down and around things, it just makes it look complete. We could have put some bushes around and trees, but I just think that these stone walls by 
uh, Mac Welshman just really make anything pop and they work perfectly well with these village houses by um, by Rick as well so all in all I think that they are the best sort of way of separating these these houses off um, and it also sticks to the the village theme and look of the area now I wanted to create a staircase down so we think these are the ones from Avania um, and in particular for me I wanted to create them a bit smaller they're a bit too big for what I wanted to use them for so again switching over to procedure objects was the perfect solution for this and we just use move it then to adjust it sometimes I do that sometimes I use PO's um, interface but for these in particular it was a little bit easier to use the move it mod to move around the procedure objects so that worked out really really nicely now I had a really cool idea over here in this segment so we already put together this boat we already found this hoist system and I wanted to create a little runway shoot off which is what you tend to see quite often in these sort of locations the sort of the way you get your bigger boats into the sea um, and this is pretty much spot on to what there is in the, in real life certainly in the UK this is something you'll come across very commonly and it took a little bit of messing around because I'm obviously going in an angle the actual props are made for being completely flat so I need to adjust it a bit but again PO comes in perfectly timed for that and that really worked out quite nicely now we're moving back on to the hill area which is where we're going to try and create this beautiful backdrop of the trees and bushes so I wanted to create a bit of realism I wanted to put a path here to sort of show that you know you can get from one area to the other and also that will mean that we'll get some sims actually dropping from the housing estate straight down into the harbour which I think would look amazing getting these guys walking down this beautiful little pathway back into the main streets and the main area because obviously this is the town centre for a lot of people it's you know the place where you'd go to get your, your shopping etc so we use this and I had an idea I'm not sure how well it works let me know in the comments section but I actually use the motorway um, crash barriers as a almost like a as a sort of a handle sort of placement to get up the um, the pathway and on distance I think it works <laughs> it's a very strange thing I know to probably try out and use but when you get it right up against the path it almost feels like a handrail um, I think a, a, a network applied um, handrail would be a really good addition to the game in general for these paths but that was a little sneaky thing that I did and found to, to manage to get that to work now it's not a build of mine until I use PO to make something and in this instance we made a little a little ornament statue with a clock inside to by, by basically combining two items and making the, the monument a little bit larger and um, I was actually really pleased with how this came about it was a uh, an idea I had when I saw both these assets to see if it actually would work together and it did <laughs> so that was really cool now the last main section that we've not worked on yet was the ferry terminal so I wanted to create a very simple basic um, traditional looking uh, little 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 ferry shipping area here so we already put down the actual asset which will bring in the ships and now I just wanted to detail this segment over here and just bring it to life I was going to do a little line over here for cars to park up very similar approach to the um, Isle of Wight um, shipping area if you recall that and you've seen that episode if you haven't check it out it's um, under the Isle of Wight playlist so I wanted to create that using some of the the lines etc so yeah all in all this was pretty pretty fun build um, if you watched it how did you think the stream went because I think it went really really well it's a really fun really fun project to take part in um, really I guess again it did push my imagination and creative skills a lot further than perhaps it has done because I've not really done a, a harbour build and I've really not done anything that needs to be done quickly um, and also function well um, I mean the Isle of Wight series they they are very heavily detailed but I haven't really got to that point of bringing a lot of people in and having big areas and making it look thriving that's something I'm trying to work towards as we build up but this I need to have an instant impact and I definitely learned a lot along the way on how to do so quickly so that is something I'm going to be implementing into the Isle of Wight series as well 
um, to see how that all comes together. But yeah, let me know in the comment section below how you think it went. As you're watching this, a winner has already been announced. I'm actually recording this voiceover the day after. Unfortunately, we was not successful <laughs> in winning this year. Um, but congratulations to Henry and uh, the other guys as well for doing so. But it, you know, after watching all of the competitors' builds, there was really nothing in it. I mean, I know it's that whole typical saying that you know, from one to the other, top to bottom, there is a very small difference in in quality or you know in terms of this marking system but you know watching back it really did look a very difficult challenge to to really decide on a winner this time around but all in all I'm really happy I had some really nice comments from the judges as well which is always very pleasing to see and a lot of people in the chat were um, shouting my praises as well so thank you all guys for your support during that it was a really really fun build really really was and um, these are the final final parts of the build. We're going to have a look at a little live play after to show you the details in a lot more, a lot more detail because it is hard to show off your whole build in a two minute video. Um, so we're going to basically drive through, have a look around very shortly, and um, then we'll leave it with the cinematics. And uh, yeah, let's go from there. So last part is just putting in this lighthouse. I wanted to put a little lighthouse in because. It just felt right and it looks beautiful on these rocks it really does so guys here we are this is the completed item completed build so let's have a look around show me so i created also this little sign which i thought was pretty cool and we created the other sign on the right hand side just for two dollars twenty for his hather location <laughs> uh, but yeah here we go we got the live play going on here you can see these colored houses really do pop and if we back up here a little bit this is the view i was trying to get and this is the view i was trying to replicate based on those images and you'll see the houses in the background just pulling through the forest area the bright colored houses really popping and yeah I'm, I'm really really pleased i've got some amazing views here i really have in terms of screenshots and yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely stoked by how well this came about in the end. Really, really happy. So let's start down this end. Let's have a look. So we're using the terminal ferries that we did on the Isle of Wight series. And you'll notice there's a lot more detailing in as well now. I've really, really put the uh, the detailing levels up here. I did a lot along the sort of seafront as well because there was a big gap between the road and the harbour textures. So I wanted to change that. We've got a little toilet here and some amusements there. I, I, the, the selection of buildings was a little bit random in terms of what I put next to each other, but I tried to make the colors look good next to one another. So you'll notice here that some of the buildings, um, I, I, well, basically I never try and put the same color next to each other. I wanted to really create that rainbow looking effect. So that worked out really nicely and they do really pop, especially next door to more conventional buildings. Like here, we've got this little pub which doesn't look out of place. You'd think it would, but to me that looks really, really good. And it, yeah, it really does pop. And I love the fact that there's so much traffic going on here. I also did lay down a lot of buses and you'll notice that I've used the actual UK buses where possible as well, which is really cool. Now I wanted to create a little market square as well on this uh, front, because like I said earlier, this is to me like the main high street patch. So you would, expect to see some sort of a market stall here we've also got the fishery market stall at the other end but i wanted to do a little bit and these market school stalls are really something special they are really nice and i found these really nice tents as well that works out really nicely now one of my favorite parts of detang was this area here the the fishing area i literally scoured the websites and oh what have we got on hang on a minute let's just Let's put these buckets down because they seem to be floating. <laughs> um, let's drop that down a little bit. There we go. Oh, too much. And there we go to there. Yep, and down. Okay. But yeah, this area here, really, really, really fun to build. Um, I, as I say, I went on the workshop and found so many assets and. I um, yeah, I even found some assets to use as fishing rods as well, which believe it or not is actually a signpost turned upside down, but it works. <laughs> the only downside is you can't get people to be walking along here 
I was going to place down some um, prop sims, but I decided against it in the end. I think it looks good enough as it is um, to really make it still pop and come alive. And the cube map as well that's been used for this just works. It just feels British. You know, we're typically seeing these cloudy days <laughs> with some sunshine coming through. So yeah, that, that worked out nicely. And there is this little church as well, and I think it's been converted or well, the building itself, I'm not sure if it's a church in, in the actual real life location, but it's been turned into a sort of a cafe, which I, I really liked. Really nice idea that was to put those two together. So let's move down a little bit more. We've got the anchor little um, ornament here or statue, which um, I did think at first is a little bit too big and it probably is, but it kind of works. I think it works. Now this area here, I wasn't too sure about it at first, but it's now become my favorite view. <laughs> um, yeah, this area here, looking at these two buildings by Rick, they really do pop. And you'll notice a lot of people. This is more people than I have ever had come into a location um, in any of my builds. So um, yeah, looks really good. And we got some event generators down here to um, make sure that these people stick around and it looks it looks thriving and buzzing and it's exactly what i wanted really really is um, and the detail the textures that i put down on the ground as well just work um, really really pleased with how they all the decals worked hand in hand and um, yeah really really nice and you'll see here as well the fishing pier i've never used one of these before but you do actually have fishing people or people fishing whichever whichever way round <laughs> you want to call it. So that worked out really nicely. We got the little fishing area here and the little fences around as well, the little chain fences really do make things pop, really, really do. Now this again, another little PO job, really happy with how this came about. It looked really, really cool. Um, and I mean, the boats, obviously we've got Mick Crosshill to thank for a lot of these. These are a lot of the boats that he created for the Monaco series, which works perfectly well for this. And now we have this DLC, it kind of works even better. So I'm hoping a lot of you guys now are checking out Mick Crosshill's work on the workshop because he has got a lot, a lot of boat stuff. Now I hope you enjoy this because I know it's hard to see um, a build in detail, especially from those little two minute clips. So I wanted to do this video just to show you this and talk through my sort of process of building, but also news in the um the patron of mine i've kind of got back on track um and i have just posted up the well the patreon link to allow you to actually run this save game yourself so if you are a patron all you need to do is go onto there check it out and you'll get the file which you need to put then put into your save file and you'll be able to load up this exact save and enjoy looking around in more detail. And ideally, I'd love to see what you guys can do around this. Maybe you'll add things to the build I've done or maybe you'll build out of it. I think that'd be really fun to jump into the Discord if you are looking to do that and you can show your progress of how you got on with that. But if you're not a patron, guys, it's literally a dollar to do so. You'll get the save game for this, you'll get teasers. You'll also start to get the Isle of Wight map theme, LUT, and save games, which I'm gonna be working on very shortly as well. So there are benefits to that now, and I will obviously do my best to keep up with that as well. So if you are looking to support the channel in any way, other than the usual liking and commenting, which you do so well, jump into there and um, see how you get on. But that's pretty much it here. Um, really, again, really, really pleased. Really, really thankful for the guys as well for inviting me to take part in this competition as again as i said earlier the competition is fierce and to be put in the same level with some of these creators is a real honor as well and a huge shout out to everyone involved in the live stream yesterday really really fantastic work um, they just get better and better and i'm looking forward to the next one as well but anyway guys this has been my little build journey for the global build off thank you for your support post and pre global build off really appreciate that um keep yourself safe and i'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching and all the best